Old cemeteries contain all kinds of sayings and poetry about how people lived or died. Irma Bonbeck said that her tombstone would read, <laughs> no big deal, I'm used to dust. I'll admit I don't spend much of my time thinking about the end of my life. Maybe it'd be nice to say something creative or a little thought provoking like, to be continued. What would you like to have carved in stone if you were to write your epitaph? The Apostle Paul was nearing the end of his life when he wrote some personal remarks that many think would have been appropriate for his tombstone. He said, I fought the good fight, and Paul was engaged in the battle for people's souls. He also said, I've kept the faith in the midst of so many trials and hardships. The writer of most of the New Testament remained resolute. And then he said, I finished the course. He completed the life God had laid out for him. These are great words, but it's not the epitaph that the old apostle had in mind.
1666, a fire destroyed the city of London. After the fire, England's greatest architect, Sir Christopher Wren, was commissioned to rebuild the city. The buildings he designed included government institutions, universities, theatres, and over 50 churches, many still standing today. But the crown jewel of Christopher Wren's life is the magnificent structure that is dedicated to the Apostle Paul. The beautiful St. Paul's Cathedral. Christopher Wren was the first person to be buried there. There's no epitaph for him. Instead, there is a Latin inscription which reads, if you seek his monument, look around you. The Apostle Paul wanted his epitaph not to be words, but instead to be people. Paul wrote, you are a letter from Christ. The result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Apparently, it's not necessary to look to the future to imagine what your epitaph will be. The sum of your life is being carved right now in people. To read it, you need only to take the advice of an old Latin inscription and simply look around you.
for I am already being poured out like a drink offering. The time has come for my departure. I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I've kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. think about your destiny? Do you ever think, I was made for more than this? When I was a child, every Tuesday after Labor Day was a time for weeping. It was a day before school started. Would I have friends in my class? Could I do the work? What if everyone was wearing white while I wore khaki? Now that last one actually did happen to me on my first day of the 10th grade. I'll tell you about that if I ever get over it. Yes, indeed, the first day of school has always been and will always be for children everywhere a time of great anxiety. I close my eyes again, but sleep doesn't come. Seems like a thousand years have come and gone. Can you find me? Listen for a crying heart I know Sometimes. 
When I was a child, I barely slept a wink on the Tuesday nights before school began. But I was never given a choice about going to school. Dad did not come into my room and say, Paul, your mother and I talked about it, and you do not have to begin a new grade tomorrow. Nope. Always had to go. And by the third or fourth day, things were always fine. September's hard when we're young. Hard enough, we spend the rest of our lives trying to avoid additional experiences of it. We stay in a job we long ago mastered because the kids don't want to move. Yeah, right. We cruise toward retirement, incredibly bored by the stale feel to each morning. But my retirement benefits would suffer if I left now. Uh-huh. The older we are, the more capable we become of taking risks that are likely to pay off. We know what to do if we're wearing khaki. The only problem is the older we become, the less inclined most of us are to take any risks at all. As a result, we become so bored that 50% of ourselves doesn't bother to get out of bed in the morning. When we crawl under the sheets at night, the part that stayed in bed all day asks, was it worth it? No, not really, we sadly reply. We die shortly after those retirement benefits kick in. The cause of death? Sheer boredom. Why is it the older we are, the more frightened of change we become? We begin to crave safety and security. Part of us dies in the process. I do believe there is a prayer we should pray. Lord, 
save us from our resistance to the thing we really fear, that if we take on new challenges, we will be successful beyond our wildest dreams. If we say yes to you, we will be blessed beyond anything we have ever imagined. And yes, challenged beyond anything we can comprehend. And if that happens, there will be no end to the risks you will ask us to take. And my, oh my, what will we do then? Not that I've already obtained all this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I'm resolved to do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal, to win the prize to which God has called me toward heaven through Christ. to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond all that we ask or imagine because of his power at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Spiritual seekers for generations have turned to the Psalms for words to express their deepest longings and greatest fears. The Psalms are as powerful today as when they were first written, expressing incredible awe and worship from the heart of